the four of them arrived back at Midgar. The city had recovered from all the shock and chaos that took place right after Meteor was destroyed. People were on the move again, looking toward the future, living each day as it came. Seeing this made Tifa blame herself again. When she looked at Midgar from the sky, she had thought that it would be fine if everything just got washed away, but she hadn't counted on the many lives still down there. I'll never forgive myself for being so selfish. She confessed to Cloud and Bard what she was thinking aboard the airship. Even though they understood how she felt, they reminded her that no matter where they are or what they do, they would never be able to get away from the guilt they feel. Since that's the case, we'll live on. We'll live on till we pay back for our sins. It's the only way. When Tifa and Cloud were alone, he looked hesitantly into her beautiful brown eyes. It's not like you to be troubled by your thoughts. It's just the way I am. No, you're much more cheerful and strong. If you've forgotten the way you were, then I'll be there to remind you. Oh, you will? Probably. The first thing they did was gather information in and around Midgar. There was a lack of materials, but above all, there wasn't any information being passed around about where to get things. The three of them split up and went around sharing the information they gathered with those who were in need. They lent their strength to those who were unable to move on their own. At night, they slept beneath Midgar's plate, which was rumored could fall at any moment. One day, Bard came back with a bottle of wine, a heater, and several types of fruit. They were given to him as thanks for helping someone dismantle a house. Get a load of this. With one hand, Barrett deftly went to work preparing something similar to Sangria. Tifa and Cloud sipped their drinks tentatively, while Barrett drowned himself in it as he pleasantly recounted memories of more peaceful times. He told them how he once drank too much and ended up taking an unexpected fall into a well. He also reminisced about when he went to propose to his now deceased wife, too drunk to remember how he even got there. It had been a long time since Tifa and Cloud burst out laughing. The next day, Bard had a serious expression as he spoke. How about we start a business and sold this wine? We? No, fool. We can't draw our customers. Tifa will do it. Me? You're good at it. Not long ago, Avalanche's hideout was at a bar named Seventh Heaven. It was what funded the members' lives and activities. Tifa was the barmaid there, or more accurately, the bar's manager. From what I see, the people of Midgar can be split into two types. Those dilly-dallying around who still can't accept what's happening in the city. Those who are working to live on. I understand how both type of people are feeling. Everyone's facing the problems, but they're just dealing with it from different ways, right? Solution to everyone's problem? Alcohol. Why is that? I don't know. But when we were half drunk yesterday, we laughed. We forgot all sorts of things, right? And that's the moment we're after. Yeah. I guess you're right. Times like that are important, ain't they? Hey, Tifa. What do you think? Tifa couldn't answer right away. She understood what Bard was saying. But opening up a bar felt like going back to her days in Avalanche. Tifa, let's give it a go. If it gets too tough, we can just stop. It won't be tough. If Tifa doesn't work, she'll end up thinking about all sorts of things. Then she'll end up not being able to do anything. That might be true. The three of them began preparations. They decided to build an edge 
a town springing up along the avenue stretching east from Midgar. The people they had aided quickly banded together, transporting materials from Midgar that would become the bar's beams and walls. Barrett shouted out his orders, while Cloud went around correcting them in a low voice. Tifa, on the other hand, learned to make Karl's wine, and improved it so it was better to drink. She also thought of food she could put on the menu, using a steady supply of ingredients she could use. Marlene was like a mascot to the people who helped build the bar. She insisted she would be the new barmaid. It was hard work resolving the problems that arose every day, but there was some fulfillment. Sometimes, Tifa would find herself feeling guilty for her sins when she smiled, but someone would always call her over to ask about something, which would interrupt those thoughts. A few days more, and we might be able to open the new bar. What are we going to do about the name? There were a few suggestions, but Cloud's ones were boring, and Bart's just made them think of monsters. In the end, the decision fell to Tifa. The two men promised they wouldn't complain, no matter what she came up with. But with the grand opening only days away, Tifa had more work to do than ever, and no time to think of a name. Did you decide on the name? We're still thinking. If you have any ideas, just let me know. I like Seventh Heaven. That was the one name I wanted to avoid. Just having the past to me was enough. I wasn't sure it was right to use a name that would remind me of it. Why? Because it was fun. If we make it Seventh Heaven, it'll be fun again. We had forgotten. We all had our ambitions, but Marlene wasn't part of that. To her, Seventh Heaven was a happy home where her family and friends were. Hmm, Seventh Heaven. I couldn't erase my past. I could only acknowledge it and live on. Tifa decided she was ready. The first day of Seventh Heaven's opening was a great success. Coral wine was something you could make yourself if you felt like it, and the food was nothing special either. Because of the limited ingredients they had, they couldn't make anything special. Even so, people sought places like this. A place where they could be with friends while drinking. A place where they could get away from the depression of reality. Or maybe forget about reality and think of the future. People who didn't have money were allowed to trade items to get a drink. They even prepared all sorts of juices so children could go in too. However, they only served the ones that got Marlene's seal of approval. She had become an indispensable presence in the bar. At night, before it got too late, she worked as a waitress. Customers who'd had too much were sent home without a second thought. Bart would sip his drink in one corner of the bar. Maybe he thought he was the bouncer. Cloud's job was to acquire the provisions and wine, but he didn't know the names of most fruits and vegetables. Tifa was surprised at first, but came to accept that as a natural consequence of the life Cloud had led. It amused her that his new life was going to start with vegetable names. Cloud wasn't the best at socializing, or more accurately, he was downright awful at it. Yet he would go negotiate with people to obtain the ingredients they needed every day without objection or complaint. The process of negotiating carried more value than the price he paid. Cloud was taking small steps forward. He's pushing himself too hard for me. Will he leave one day once the bar gets on the right track? Tifa shook her head, trying to drive that doubt away. She told herself she shouldn't hope for anything more than this. After the first week of being open, Barrett, Seeing how well the business was going, told the others he was leaving Marlene with them and going on a journey. I want to go on a journey to settle my past. Tifa was disturbed by Barrett's words, but Cloud nodded calmly, as if he understood completely. What about me? You think I don't? Tifa, you would do that here. 
both of you. Don't just take. Show that you can give, too. After saying this, Bard said he still had to get ready and walked out of the bar. You knew about this? Yeah. Did you try to stop him? Nah, I didn't. Because he would just say, this is Tifa's place. Hmm. I guess there's nothing we can do then. Does Cloud also think this? Marlene, who had always slept in Tifa's bed, slept with Barrett the night before he left. Their conversation could be heard late into the night. Early the next morning, Barrett set off. Behind him, Marlene shouted, Send me some letters. Phone me too. Barrett lifted his artificial right arm, which had a machine gun attached to it. He kept walking without looking back. It was the back of a figure who had no other way to live than to fight. I wonder just what kind of life he would find. I pray that he would be able to stay far away from war, not just take. I prayed he would be able to prove that he could give too. Don't worry, I'll be a good girl for them. Hearing those words, Cloud and Tifa exchanged glances. For us? I'll take care of Cloud and Tifa. Looking back, Bart shouted, Do your best! His voice was a little shaky. You be strong. Work together as a family and keep at it, you hear? Friends were a necessity to me so that I could live on without being suppressed by the guilt I felt. Even if they all bore the same scars, the same sins, we couldn't live without comforting and encouraging each other. Maybe you could call that family. We just had to work together and do our best. Together with friends we can call family, there's nothing we can't get through. I'll put Cloud in our family too. I appreciate that. After Cloud thanked Marlene's innocent offer with his usual serious expression, he glanced at Tifa. She nodded a little. Would this complicate things? Tifa decided she would stop worrying about the relationship between the two of them.